Hello, my name is Nyla Smith with The Quintessential Gentleman. Today we're speaking with Gerald Smith II, multi-hyphenate and star of HBO Max's Sweet Life, Los Angeles, a reality show focused on LA-based 20-somethings, executive produced by Issa Rae. So during today's conversation with Gerald, we'll delve more into his background, current and upcoming projects, and of course, his highlights and experiences from Sweet Life. So Gerald, Thank you for taking the time to speak with the quintessential gentleman. Um, can you share some more about your background and how you got involved with Sweet Life? Absolutely. Uh, thank you for having me, first and foremost. Very welcome. Um, I'm born and raised in Los Angeles, um, which you know a lot of people can't really say these days, or you, it's it's kind of rare for you to find. Um, yeah. I got involved with Sweet Life, so I actually work in entertainment. Um, and there was, you know, kind of some buzz going around that they were casting for this thing, this this show of ours. Um, and one of my really good friends, Jordan Bentley, who was on the first season of the show, uh, ended up getting interviewed and going through the casting process. Um, and he suggested myself, in which case I was interviewed and went through the process. And then um, I kind of suggested some of the other folks that you see on screen. And that's kind of how it came about. Um, I like to say that we manifested an opportunity like this because I, I think that we're the perfect group of friends for it, but that's that's the gist of it. Okay, awesome, awesome. So were there any concerns or reservations or preconceived notions about getting involved with a reality show? I think, uh, you know, when you're doing something like this for the first time, it's always tough to kind of let that wall down and, and realize that you're basically going to let the entire world in on your life. Um, yeah. I will say it's, you know, it took some getting used to for sure, but it's definitely something that I thoroughly enjoy now. Um, and like to think that, that I was, you know, really made for, for something like this. And um, I will say more, more so within the lines of my relationship than my personal life. Um, it took some, you know, there was some reservation and my fiance, now fiance and I, um, and she's also on the show, we were kind of like, okay, is, is the the inner working of our relationship something that we really want to show on TV? But, you know, once we kind of got into the process and um, felt the support of HBO and Issa and all of our producers and fellow cast, um, it becomes easy. And, and like I say, it's something that we're, we're, I'm thoroughly used to now. Okay. So that actually conveniently leads me into my next question. As you mentioned, your fiance. Congratulations on your recent engagement to Cheryl Devines, and I hope I'm saying her name correctly. Desveens, Desveens. Desveens, okay, sorry about that. All good. Congratulations, she's your fellow cast member on Sweet Life. So, of course, we love the Black, black love representation. <laughs> Can't get enough of that. Um, so, in what ways, can you expand upon what you were saying about, in what ways was your experience on the show um, filming together more challenging or beneficial to your relationship? Um, I think beneficial in a lot of ways, just to start off with, because we're very comfortable in our relationship with who we are, with, you know, how we got to this point. We, I've known Cheryl since I was in high school, and we've been dating since about senior year of high school. Um, and being on TV kind of really just reaffirmed some of those things that we already knew about each other. Like when we got into binds or, or we're at odds with some of our friends, the ways that we were able to show up for each other. Um, and have each other's backs, um, but also, you know, able to be individuals and, and being able to express my opinions and her being able to express her opinions um, and, and kind of just taking this day by day, um, separately and together. Um, as far as the challenges, I mean, you, 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 you don't, you hadn't really seen it a lot with us, but like you see, like when you're in a relationship and you're at odds, and, and you're not, you know, there's a disagreement or actually in first season when when we were kind of going back and forth about me moving in or being ready to move in and take that next step in our relationship, um, which seems so long ago now. But when we were at odds about that, you know, just having to navigate that with cameras in your face and, and be being truthful in, in how we're feeling in, in those moments and understanding that it's it's bigger than just us explaining or trying to get to certain points in our relationship but more so trying to get the audience to relate to the point that we're at in our lives like I like to think that you know there were a lot of people in relationships who were thinking about making those next steps like moving in with your partner um, and going through those reservations and being someone like me who had you know only moved out for college but 
you know, I went to college at UCLA and I'm from LA. So my, my dorm room was, or my apartment was in 30 minutes from my parents' house. So someone who had never really lived outside of their parents' house, you know, um, and, and, you know, the challenge is being as open as possible in those situations so that viewers can relate to what we're going through. Okay. So transi transitioning over to the friendship side of things on Sweet Life, um, one of the recurring themes throughout both seasons, one and two, was that male bond, male friendship sort of theme. So was there something new that you learned about the importance of male friendships and male relationships um, from your experience on the show and from, from filming? Yeah, I mean, I like to think that my male relationships at their core are very strong. Um, being on TV forced us to have a lot of conversations in the open that we may or may not have had in private before, you know, like how we're feeling and how we're dealing with anxiety, you know, those are things that we kind of touch on amongst each other, but never in detail to the point where, you know, we end up sitting down and, and having a full roundtable discussion about how we're feeling at certain times. And that's what I'm really thankful for, Sweet Life, um, for, for, you know, forcing us to have those conversations. So like I said, so the viewers can understand um, and get that relatability to us as individuals, not as characters. Um, but what it has made me realize, what it has made me realize is that in navigating my friendships with some of my closer friends, and then especially now in season two, where you see, you know, uh, another group of guys kind of introduced to the show, understanding the differences in, in, in each of us, um, and, and how we're, you know, how those differences sometimes make us a bit more similar than different, you know, understanding that we're all navigating through things within our lives. And we may have come from different places, but we're all in the same place now and, and dealing with some of the same things um, and just kind of learning more to understand people's viewpoints when it comes to situations and understanding how we all kind of get to these places from starting where we started from. Love it. Love it. So in general, how have you been managing the exposure and the newfound fave, if you will, visibility. Um, I'm assuming it's more advantageous as opposed to negative, but if you could talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, <laughs> you're like, yeah. I, mean, I, I, to be quite honest with you, I love it. I love, especially when I'm in my city, when I'm in LA, I love being able to, you know, go places and people recognize me and say, oh, you're, you know, the guy from Sweet Life. We just finished watching the show and we really love such and such. And it just really feels, feels good to know that People are watching and relating to the show um, more than anything. I think that, you know, with exposure, with being on TV comes a, a certain level of recognizability um, to where like no matter where I go or wherever we as a cast go, people are going to notice us um, and, and say hello. But I, it's, it's honestly, it's, it's so much fun and I'm, I'm enjoying the entire process. Um, season two has been much bigger than season one in that, you know, season one, a lot of people were just introduced to us for the first time and now they're kind of really starting to get the gist of who we are. Um, the negative aspects, I wouldn't say that there are many negative aspects. The internet can be a bit harsh at times, but I think that comes with the territory and people are entitled to their opinions, but what's most important is that they watch the show and you know they're relating to us in some way to the, to the point where they can point out our flaws as well, so. Awesome. So is there anything you can share about the possibility of a season three? Uh, I wish there was something <laughs> I could share about the possibility of a season three. If you're, if you hear something, you let me know. Cause I, I would, I, <laughs> listen, I'm amongst other things that I have going on. The most important thing is that, you know, I understand and don't take lightly this platform that we have mm -hmm. with Sweet Life and, and the magnitude of the opportunity that HBO and Issa and everyone involved has given us. And I'd want to do, 30 seasons of it, if I can, you know? And yeah. so here's here's to hoping that we get a third one. Okay, okay. I mean, fingers crossed, because I, I do enjoy it, I have to say. Um, so speaking of other things that you have going on, can we yeah. talk a little bit about the Basketball Adjacent podcast, which Absolutely. I, believe was, I believe that was spawned from your experiences as a basketball player at UCLA. Um, so yeah, I would love to learn more about the podcast and where can we listen, what, you know, kind yeah. of get you have. Absolutely. Um, the podcast is available on all streaming platforms and I put up full video episodes um, on YouTube and a couple of snips and clippets on my Instagram. Um, the podcast was really born um, exactly how you said it. I spent my four years in college playing basketball at UCLA, which for anyone who's not familiar with how college athletics works means I had literally no time for anything else. Um, my, my complete day, summer, 
off season was spent focused on basketball or training or something kind of relating to basketball. And so when that time came for me to graduate um, and understanding that I wasn't going to go play professionally somewhere, I didn't really know, you know, just exactly how or where to pivot um, as far as starting a professional career for myself. Um, and once I did find out and thankfully found my footing in the entertainment industry, I was introduced to a lot of really cool careers and opportunities that I had never really associated with basketball or sports in general. And so I created the Basketball Adjacent Podcast um, for athletes, for sports fans, for individuals that are, you know, kind of just fans of the subject matter to kind of be introduced to and understand the different avenues and careers and opportunities that are available adjacent to sports. Um, you know, you see athletes, when they stop playing, they become broadcasters and, and journalists. But what you don't see is the agents behind the scenes negotiating contracts. You don't see the marketing executives that are negotiating these endorsement deals. You don't see folks that are hosting, you know, podcasts, regular folks that that don't know that outside of those broadcasting, those big broadcasting opportunities, that things like this, opportunities like this exist. Um, so that was the point, just to, to educate in the process myself on on everything that's out there um, that, that kind of spawns from life in and after sports, but everyone else that kind of might be looking to make that transition themselves. Okay, so it seems like you're keeping busy. So, <laughs> you know, it's true. So is there anything else you'd like to share with us or you're able to share with us at this time that you're working on? Um, I'm working on a really, really big brand campaign with a, a very big brand. I can't share which one just yet, but um, the beauty of Sweet Life for me is that as someone who has aspirations of obviously doing as much Sweet Life as possible, but being on camera talent, um, you know, on screen talent, whatever it may be, um, opening up myself to more opportunities with with this beautiful platform that we have. And thankfully, a lot of brands in the process have reached out to me and doing some really cool stuff. Um, and, and when it drops, I'll be sure to share it so that, so that everybody can see. Okay, looking forward to that. So where do you see Gerald in five to 10 years? I know that's sort of a cliche kind of question, but it's Not at all. an important one. <laughs> Not at all. Um, I see Gerald as a household name. Um, Gerald Smith being a household name. I want to be, um, when you see a certain type of content or a certain type of campaign or when, when there's a certain type of show that's being put out, you think, oh, that sounds like something that Gerald is a part of, or that seems like that one thing that I saw Gerald in, or maybe that's me starring in something. You know, I've, I really want to continue to um, lead by example for, for folks that look like me and come from where I come from and, you know, taking advantage of these opportunities that I have to kind of just continue to get better day by day for myself. So did I hear some potential acting aspirations? In yeah, that? absolutely. Absolutely. There, there are some, there's some small projects that I've done in the past, definitely more that I'm looking to do in the future, um, you know, given everything that, that's kind of in front of me right now. And absolutely. Forward to it. So we always we ask a lot of our guests this last question. Um, what is your definition of a quintessential gentleman? Mm. My definition of a quintessential <laughs> gentleman, yeah, I'd probably say it's it's somebody um, with a swag that you can't explain. It's it's kind of like uh, somebody who takes places and spaces and, and makes them their own and and kind of operates on their their own accord, moving on their own time. And, and kind of floats through life um, as as easy as it comes to them. Okay, I like that, I, I like that. Well, thank you so much for speaking with us. Um, it's been a pleasure. So how can people get in touch with you? You have a lot going on, so how can we stay updated? Do you, do you wanna share your socials or anything? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Well, first and foremost, go stream Sweet Life Los Angeles on HBO Max. Go, go do that for sure. Um, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I'm available on all social platforms is at Gerald H. Timms. That's Gerald and Smith backwards. So J-E-R-R-O-L-D-H-T-I-M-S. Um, and I'm in LA. I'm around. So if you see me, you see me. All right. Sounds great. Sounds great. Well, Gerald, it's been such a pleasure. Thank you so much. And all Thank the best. You Thank you for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. Take care. <laughs>